Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We honor the Lord for all things. We give God praise for allowing us to be in his holy and divine presence just one more time. Amen. God is a good God. Yes, he is. And even on this beautiful, rainy Sunday morning, amen, amen God is still worthy to oh, be yeah. praised. This service is emanating from the sanctuary of the Theolon Baptist Church, located at 4717 Augusta Road here in Garden City, Georgia. Yeah. We thank God for our pastor, Pastor Harold Edwards, yeah. Minister Emmanuel Gray, Minister Victor Logan, and Minister Arnold Matthews, our deacons ministry, deaconesses ministry, the Felon Nation, we thank God for you, our friends and family members who are watching us by way of Facebook and YouTube Live. Now our deacons are going to take us further in this the Lord's service. Amen. Let's have church in Jesus' name. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Yes. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. God saw fit for us to see another day. Yes. Not because of something that we did so good or glorious. Only because of his grace and mercy that abound upon us that we were allowed to see another day. And all we can do in return is give him thanks, give him praise, and give him glory for the day that he has provided us with. Because if it wasn't for him, we would not have seen this day. It was him and only him that allowed the blood to run warm through our veins one more time. We're going to get started this morning. Welcome in the spirit of the Lord into the house for the opening selection of our very own Deacon Lee. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. morning you better stop now. It's praying time. Stop now. It's praying time. Stop now. It's praying time. The sun is almost down. You better stop now. It's praying time. Stop now. It's praying time. It's praying time. The sun is almost down. Sinner man, you better run for there's gonna be another storm. It won't be rain, snow, or sleep. But the fire be falling on your road. You better stop. It's praying time. Stop now. It's praying time. It's praying time, the sun is almost down. It's praying time, it's praying time, it's praying time, the sun is almost down. Sun is almost down. 
It's praying time. It's praying time. It's praying time. The sun is almost done. Amen. 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 It's praying time. Yes, it is. The word says we should not cease from prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now we will have a scripture brought to us from our very own Deacon Anthony. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Good morning. Boys, glad to be back. Some of y'all probably didn't miss me, but Jesus had to come. But anyway, yes, I'll say this before I get into the scripture. If you ain't got all your shots, take them, y'all. Yes. Because that thing still got me weak. But God Amen. is making me strong. Each day. Right now, I'm going to read Psalm 6. And everybody that able to get up while I read this scripture Amen. or stand, I uh, appreciate it. In the name of the Lord, Amen. Psalm 6. O Lord, rebuke me not in thy anger, neither chasten me in thy hot pleasure. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak, O Lord. Heal me from my bones and vax. My soul is also so vax. But thou, O Lord, how long? Return, O Lord, deliver my soul. Yes, Lord. O save me from the mercy sake. For in death there is no remembrance of Amen. me. Yes, Lord. In the grave, who shall give thee thanks? Mm -hmm. I am weary with thy going, growing. All the night make my bed to swim. I water my couch with my tears. My eyes is consumed because of grief, Lord. Uh -huh. It waxed old because of all my enemies. Depart from me, O ye workers of iniquity. Yes. For the Lord has heard the voice of my weeping. The Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord will receive my prayer. Let all my enemies be ashamed and so back. Let them return and be ashamed suddenly. Amen. 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 The word of God yes. for the people of God. Yes. Yes, Lord. Let the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Lord. Now we will have a prayer taken to the throne of grace yes, Lord. brought to us by our very own Deacon Baker. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm going to say a prayer from the heart. In thy head, please. Yes. Heavenly Father, I'm coming before you as one of your children. Yes, Lord. Lord. I watched the news, my Lord Father, and I saw the fires. Oh, I yeah. Violence. I see yes. the pestilence. Yes. And I say this like the songwriter said, What's going on? Yes. What's going on, Lord? Oh, yeah. But I pray, my Lord Father, knowing that as your child, I have a way. Yes. You came to me, Father, saying, You are the truth, you are the light. You have a way for me. You have So many people going through so many troubles, so many people are addicts, so many people are going to the point, Father, but they won't even commit suicide, my Lord Jesus. Yeah. But I pray that we are children of God to let them know there's another way. We have the blessed hope, the blessed hope in Jesus Christ. Yeah. We came here, Father, to free us from the pain, to give us an outside chance, to give us a chance, Father, to upload the world to pain. Yeah. I pray for you right now, my Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. And we will try to kill you, my Lord, Father. Come to your children on their knees, knowing you are our Lord, you are our Savior, Father, you are our blessed hope. Yes, Lord. I thank you, Father. I praise you, my Lord Jesus, knowing that all you have, Father. Thank you, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. The word says, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous yes. availeth much. Lord. We can always find someone that stands in the gap that's in the need of prayer. Yes, Lord. Yes. So a lot of times we figure we don't have nothing to pray for for ourselves. There's always someone standing in the need of prayer. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 Now we will have a selection brought to us by our very own Deacon Perry. Amen. Giving honor to God. Yes, Lord. Pastor officers, members, and Christian friends. You know, we as Christians, we always have the Lord's presence in his Holy Spirit that goes with us everywhere we go. Amen. Yes, Lord. 
And this is just to say thank you for Lord for walking with us yes. everywhere yes. we go. Yes. Walk with me, Lord. Please walk with me. Walk with me, Lord. Please walk with me. While I'm on this tedious journey, I want Jesus to walk with me. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Walk with me, Lord. Please walk with me. While I'm on this tedious journey, I want Jesus. Couldn't think of no one better 
in this walk of life that I would have walk with me in Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We want to thank each and every one of you for taking a part in this devotional service this morning. We pray that a blessing was bestowed upon someone's heart as we sung a song, gave a prayer, read a scripture. And we ask today, if you just come seeking something today, all I ask is that you just open your heart and just allow the spirit of the Lord to enlighten upon it. We thank you so much and continue to be blessed. Now we will have our ministry of giving with our deacons. Thank you.
he's my friend. Oh, yes, he is. He's a mother in the motherland. He's a father and the fatherless. He's a bright and morning star. Good morning, fella. Let us take time this morning to say thank you to the Lord for what he has done. We thank you for our health and our strength. Lord, we thank you for fellowship and, fr and friendship. Now we have taken up a collection in his name that we pray that we are able to use it for what we took it up for. These and other blessings we ask in our son Jesus Christ. Well, amen. Oh, anybody got Jesus? 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 Oh, anybody got
everybody got Jesus. I got Jesus. I see if you got Jesus. I got Jesus. You got a mighty good friend. I got Jesus. If you got Jesus. I got Jesus. You got a mighty good doctor. I got Jesus. If you got Jesus. I got Jesus. You got a mighty good lawyer. I got Jesus. You got a mighty good lawyer. I got Jesus. Can I ask you all to come to here? Can I ask you all to come to here? Oh, everybody got Jesus. I got Jesus. Oh, everybody got Jesus. I got Jesus. I see if you got Jesus. Oh, let me hear you clap your hands. 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 I see if you got Jesus. I got Jesus. I see if you got Jesus. Oh, let me go to a Lord. Oh, let me go to a Lord. Oh, let me go to a Lord. Oh, let me go to a Lord.
is holy low. I'm just holy low. Can I tell you one more thing? Can I? Thank you, my Lord.
My mouth gets so loud, I forgot about the mic. <laughs> yeah, glory. I've been hanging around my pastor. Uh oh, right. good man. They That's say right. they That's say right. we got we got loud voices. Uh huh. Amen. And that praise God in the rapture. Yeah. 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 Amen. Start verse one. James, the servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting my brother. Kind of all joy. I like that. Yes. Kind of all joy. Yes. When we fall into divers temptation, knowing that our trial, a trial of your faith, work is patient. Yes. But let patience have a perfect work, uh -huh. that you may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. If any man like wisdom, Hallelujah. let him ask God, who give it Hallelujah. to every man living it and unbread it not. And let and it should be given him. But let him that in faith mm. let him ask in faith. Yeah. Nothing wavy. Mm -hmm. For he that wavers is like the wave of the sea. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Driven with the wind, tossed to and fro, let this, let him not ask this man, let this man think he should receive anything from the Lord. Hallelujah. Sometimes we get wavering, we, right. we get doubtful, and we, oh, yes. we, we, we say, well, maybe God's going to do it, or maybe not going to do it. Uh, you can't be wavering. you got to say, well, I know God's going to do it, and have the faith that he's going to do it, and leave it with him. Yes. So we, we, we allow ourselves to walk in, in doubt and unbelief when, when God say, trust me, trust me, trust me, and I'll bring it to pass. At this time, we have a present presentation by Martin Luther King, Bible Youngman's. Yes. Uh, we're having our uh, Christopher Giving and Madison Edwards and um, Richard, Richard, Albert Richardson. Are right. uh, y'all here today? Come down. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Hey, give him a hand. everyone Good so this what I wrote was about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Born the 15th of January 1929 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. will become one of the most historical and iconic civil rights leader. He fought for a peaceful approach to some society's biggest problem racism and justice and equality. One of Dr. King's renowned peaceful approach was Montgomery Bus Car Boycott excuse me in 1955, Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat to a white man and, and was arrested for that. This event set the precedent for a change in America. This morning, I will list a few of Dr. King's most memorable moments. 1955, he received his Doctorate of Philosophy in Somatic Theology from Boston University. Within the following year, prohibiting conspiracy that interfered with lawful business, Dr. King was arrested. In total, he will be arrested nearly 30 times. 1956, he made sure those boycotting took a nonviolent approach. This was to break the cycle of retributive violence. 1957, Dr. King's first book, Stride Towards Freedom, was published. This book was written to tell the story of the Montgomery, Alabama, Alabama protest, bus protest. 1963, August 28th, the March on Washington became the largest civil rights demonstration in history with nearly 250,000 people in attendance. At the same march, Dr. K makes his famous speech, I have a dream. 1964, Martin Luther King Jr. is awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. Dr. King at the time was the youngest person to be awarded the Nobel Peace Prize at age 35 for his speech. 1966, July 10th, Dr. King initiates a campaign to end discrimination in housing employment in schools in Chicago. This was to include all races having the same opportunity. 1967, the Supreme Court opposed a commission of Dr. King by a Birmingham court for demonstrating without a permit. 
He spends four days in jail, but this does not keep him from continuing to fight for justice. 1968, April 4th, Dr. King, Dr. Martin Luther King was fatally shot while standing on the balcony of Lorraine Motel in Memphis, Tennessee. 1986, a national holiday is proclaimed in honor of Dr. Martin Luther King. Although his life was short-lived, his message continued to live on. Thank you. Give our hands. Amen. What you didn't know, you know now. Hallelujah. Very good. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm about to say a pro from Martin Luther King Jr. People fail to get along because they fear each other. They fear each other because they don't know each other. They don't know each other because they have not communicated with each other. I'm just about to do what they did too. <laughs> Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., whose original birth name was Michael King Jr., was born on January 15, 1929, in Atlanta, Georgia. His father was a Baptist minister and his mother was a school teacher. At the early age of 15, he graduated from high school and enrolled in Morehouse College, where his father and grandfather graduated. Dr. King received his Bachelor's of Arts degree in 1984, I meant 1948, from Morehouse College. A bachelor's degree, a bachelor's of divinity degree in 1951 from Crozer Theological Seminary, and his doctorate degree in 1955 from Boston University. While in Boston, he met a married, he met and married Coretta Scott and had two sons and daughters together. Dr. King was a prominent leader in the civil rights movement. He promoted nonviolent tactics such as peaceful marches to achieve the civil rights. In 1963, he led a crowd of over 200,000 interracial groups on the historic march on Washington, where he delivered the famous I Have a Dream speech. The efforts of Dr. King, with many others, led to the passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. In 1964, he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. On April 3rd, 1968, the night before he died, Dr. King told the crowd in Memphis, Tennessee, I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, Amen. but I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. struggles of this life we shall overcome the trials and the tribulations we shall overcome the persecution that we have to go through sometimes the sickness and all that accompanies this life we shall overcome it one day in Jesus Christ the Bible says that we're more than conquerors through him that loved us and gave his life for us we thank God this morning again for our children let's give God a hand clap of praise 
Let us always be mindful to encourage them. They are our future. Many of us won't be around much longer. But the work of God must go on. So let us, while we still have breath, blood, encourage our children to raise them up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Hallelujah. We don't have to have as many sleepless nights as we do. We thank God for this day. Amen. We thank him for his grace and all that he has blessed us with. I'm so glad that we uh, taken a little time today to give God something back. Amen. Amen. Because he's given us so much. Sometimes we need to just stop and smell the roses of God's grace. And tell the Lord thank you. For what you've done for me. Because without your grace it, it just wouldn't be possible. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. The Lord is going to see us through. Also, by way of announcement, so next Saturday at 11 o'clock, we're going to have the homegoing service for Brother Ed Bryan. Amen. So we just ask that you continue to lift up the family in prayer. Lift up our church family in prayer uh, as we prepare to uh, walk that last mile, as we say, of the way with our loved ones. That's next Saturday. If you haven't uh, called uh, the family, if you get the opportunity, please do. And if you can't find the time to call them, make sure you stay on your knees and pray for them. Amen. Let them know your love for them. Amen. And sometimes we forget to tell each other how much we love them. We, we, we should always remind one another how much we love them. Because God reminds us every day. Yeah. 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 Pastor, when the last time God said that to you, when God woke me up this morning, glory to God, he let me know yeah. that his love still endures with me. When I can't find my way, he reminds me that he's always there with me. So I am encouraged in all things. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you, O oh Lord, that we're gathered here in this place, the place that you provided for us. We thank you for the life, Lord God, that we woke up this morning and we are able to do the things necessary to bring us to this place. But we realize, Father, that it was by your grace and your grace through Jesus Christ that made all of this happen. Now that we're here, we want to just fellowship one with another. But more than anything, we want to make this an hour of worship to you this morning. Your word declares that we must do it in the power of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. We know that he's here. We're talking about the power of the Spirit in the lives of the believer that will manifest, glory to God, the words of glory from our mouths this morning. And the words of praise. Meet us where we are, Father. Hallelujah that we might in this hour praise your holy name Lord let this be the greatest hour of worship that we have ever had here at Fellon let it be and it can by your power as we humble ourselves this morning in Jesus name Lord do it for us and press upon the heart of these your children hallelujah the importance of being a child of God with a mandate to go forth to do your will in Jesus name now Lord as we prepare to bring the word we ask that you would touch the hearts and minds and mostly the ears of these your people prepare them to receive what thus says the Lord a word that if it does not apply any application to their lives because of where they are today Lord God impress it upon the heart to take that word and use it to be a blessing to somebody else and Lord, don't forget about me. I need thee. Let the power of your spirit come upon me. Let your anointing flow. Open up the windows of heaven and pour out grace, Lord, upon me in this hour. That I might serve you faithfully in ministering to these your people. Do it, O oh Lord, that at the end of it all, their hearts will be uplifted where they will give you the glory. Hallelujah. And thank Jesus for the salvation that we have. We thank you, Lord, and we, we bless your holy name. Give us what we need, just a little while longer, in this place. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is King of kings and Lord of lords, we do pray. And every child of God say it, amen. 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 And amen.
All glory. All honor. Yes, it is. For those that have the Bibles that we declare the reading of God's word, we're coming from the book of Romans chapter 10. We're going to begin reading at the, from the fourth verse and culminating through the 13th verse. You're able to stand as we declare the reading of the word of God. We ask that you would stand with us. Romans 10, verse 4. We're going through the book of Romans in our Bible study class, and we're being edified, glory to God, built up on our most holy faith in the word of God. Amen. So we invite you all out to come out on Thursday nights at 6.30 to our Bible study. Amen. Amen. The word of God reads, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in that heart who shall ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep, that is, to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what said it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead. Hallelujah. Thou shalt be saved. Pastor, is that easy? That's what God's word says. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whosoever, glory to God, believeth on him should not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You, you can take your seats in the presence of the Lord, glory to God. You know, sometimes we... Uh, uh, be concerned about what we are going to uh, uh, preach and I know that in the church setting the Bible uh, uh, declares that where there is salvation the gospel doesn't need to be preached the, the, the message of the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ but Paul told Timothy every now and then you got to do the, the work of an evangelist you got, you, got, you got to make full proof of your ministry and sometimes uh, Sister Bird, we, 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 we need to go back glory to God we see God has just brought us into this new year glory to God and we want to make sure Hallelujah. Uh -huh. That we are where we need to be because we don't know what the next moment Amen. is going to bring. I'm so glad this morning. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. I am so glad this morning. Hallelujah. I have joy, glory to God, like never before on this day. Amen. See, the joy I had yesterday won't suffice me for the day. And the joy that I have today is not promised to me tomorrow. Yes, so I have joy today. Not that I'm good looking, glory to God. Not that I'm rich, not that I'm Sandra's husband or she's my wife, glory to God, not that, glory to God, I even have life today. I, I'm so joyous and overwhelmed today is because I am saved, yeah. glory to God. Yeah. I'm saved. No matter what the world takes from me, guess what? They can't take that from me. So glad this morning that my name has been written in the Lamb's book of life. And I tell folk all the time, God doesn't have a big eraser because if I make a misstep, like some people say, that he's going to erase my name out of the book. The name is in the book forever because it's been placed there by the God who knows the end from the beginning. In fact, the Bible says we've been saved before the foundation of the world in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So I thank God this morning that I am saved. But, I, but I'm concerned because I got loved ones and I got friends and I got acquaintances that might not be saved this morning. In fact, there just might be somebody in the church, glory to God, who, who has not really been born again. Someone who is resting in the power of their own righteousness through their works. God wants you to know this morning for the one millionth time, glory to God. If you don't come by faith, 
you cannot be saved. Your works will not get you in. No matter how much I preach, you can go to hell from the pulpit. No matter how much you sing, you can go to hell from the choir loft. No matter how much you serve, you can go to hell from the usher board or any place, glory to God, if you're not born again. And the thing about religion sometimes, Deacon Lee, it has such a good aura of salvation. You know what I mean by that? Some people, glory to God, they're so religious. If you didn't, if you, uh, 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 if God didn't know any better, he would think that they were saved. Glory to God. They say all the right things. They do all the right things. In the eyes of man, but the one thing that God has called them to do, they don't do that. God wants you to know that for the one millionth time, your works won't get you in. So many this morning in the world and in our families and perhaps even in our churches have left out of the year 2022. And by the grace of God have been brought into the year 2023 who believe that they stand in right relationship with God when the truth of the matter is they do not. That is, many are persuaded that because they have reformed their lives, glory to God, whereby their conduct, uh, uh, whereby they used to do a lot of immoral things, they have cut some of those things out of their lives. And because they have cut those things out, I want you to hear me this morning, because they have reformed their lives, because they have reformed their lives. Let me say it again. For they, glory to God, have reformed their lives. Hallelujah. They now believe that they're qualified to enter into the kingdom of God. That is their, now they believe heavenly bound and on their way to glory. You see, they believe that because they don't get drunk no more. Hallelujah. They're on their way to heaven. They, they believe that because they don't smoke cigarettes and smoke dope no more, glory to God. And they believe that they're on their way to heaven. They believe because their language has been cleaned up and they don't curse like they used to curse. They, they believe that they are on their way to heaven. They believe that because they have finally come to the position where they're going to be faithful in their relationships of marriage, glory to God, that they are on their way to heaven. And they believe that anything that they may find themselves doing according to the Ten Commandments, glory to God, they are on their way to glory. Come on. They believe in their hearts that they're all right, hallelujah, in the sight of God. When you throw in, for those who are members of the church, glory to God, or their works about what auxiliary they might be on or what committee they might be on, and then when you cap that, glory to God, with their giving, hallelujah, is, that is their own icing, Lee Graham, on their own religious cake. You're not going to convince them, hallelujah, that they're not on their way to heaven. Don't you hear what I'm saying? I glory to God because it's about what they have done and not what God has ordained for them to do. The truth of the matter is they're not on their way to heaven. They're about as far away from heaven as a person can get. I don't do this anymore, and I don't do that anymore, and I'm right in the sight of God. Jesus was asked by the Jews in John chapter 6, glory to God, John chapter 8, what must we do to work the works of God? Jesus said, believe on the one that he sent. Hallelujah. You ain't got to do no cooking. You ain't got to do no singing. You ain't got to do no giving. You ain't got to do none of that. Just believe. Philippians in jail said, what must I do to be saved? Paul told him, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved, you and your whole household. Amen. You see, getting to heaven this morning is not like playing horseshoes. You know, in horseshoes, you don't have to make a ringer. You can just get the shoe close to the star. Amen. There ain't no getting close to heaven. You're either in or you're out. You see, some folk, glory to God, they think, well, because I do all of this, well, if I don't cross all the T's and dot all the I's, I've done enough, glory to God, to get in. It ain't about crossing T's and dotting I's. It's about your faith through grace in Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, being moral 
makes for a good resume if you're trying to establish your own bar of righteousness. Y'all hear what I'm saying? You see, when I can say, well, I don't do this no more. Or I don't do that no more. It, it, it makes good for a resume if you're trying to establish your own bar of righteousness. You can see the bar. You can make it as low as you want to. You can always say that Deacon Anthony sin look worse on him than it does on me. Good, whatever you desire, you can do it. That if you're making way for admission into your own heaven. You can make the resume call whatever you want. If it's your heaven that you're going in, in fact, you ain't got to have a resume. None of these things are going to have any value and any merit and any influence and any irrelevance, glory to God, when it comes to entrance into the kingdom of God. One of my favorite Bible teachers who's going home to glory, Dr. Adrian Rogers, put it this way. He said, salvation is not reward for the righteous, for there is none. No, not one. But is a gift for the guilty, hallelujah, of which all of us at some point do qualify to receive. I thank God this morning that I have received my gift, hallelujah, because without the gift, could not make it in without the gift. Amen. Could not be watched without the gift. Could not be born again without the gift. Could not have my name written, Andre. Hallelujah. In the Lamb's book of life. So if anyone is trusting this morning in that which warrants their own righteousness as the means for their salvation, know for an assurity. That one day, it is all going to go up in smoke. Know for certain that it's going to be burned up before the judgment seat of God. Because God's word is clear in our text, glory to God this morning, and makes it abundantly clear that Christ is the end of the law for righteousness sake. Christ is the end of the law, what Paul is saying, for those who are trying to please God by their works. Hallelujah. Simply put, if you're bringing forth anything other than faith alone in the finished work of the cross of Jesus Christ, yeah. you and anyone else are just wasting your time. Yeah. My heart is heavy for this church because I just believe that everybody, glory to God, is not on the ship of salvation. I just believe, glory to God, that there are some. You say, why is that, Pastor? Because I don't hear the exuberance. Let me tell you something about salvation. When you're saved, you ought to have joy unspeakable. You ought to be able to tell no matter what, glory to God. I might have to go through it now, but for eternity, I'm going to live with all joy. You just don't hear Jesus coming from the mouth. You just don't hear the power of the Holy Ghost manifesting in their lives. Their affections are still for the things of the earth. Now, I ain't God. I can't say I ain't saved. But glory to God, I'm, like Grace said last week, I'm a pretty good fruit inspector. Hallelujah. So you ain't going to tell me that that's the pecan tree when I see oranges growing from it. You ain't going to convince me that's the orange tree, glory to God, when I see grapefruits coming from it. And it's going to be hard to convince the world, glory to God, that you are a child of God if they don't see love, joy, peace, meekness, temperance, patience, long-suffering, gentleness, and kindness. Hallelujah. Because these are the fruit that the Holy Spirit of God brings forth in our lives. If you don't come with faith, you will never accomplish what is needed in order to be saved. Paul makes it clear that obtaining salvation is not rooted in zeal for God. Uh -huh. I'm doing something. I'm on this committee or that committee. It's not about zeal for God. That is doing stuff that we think that would bring pleasure to God our sight and make us acceptable in his eyes. But rather is founded upon the knowledge that is written in his word 
that makes it clear what God demands for our salvation. That's the focus of what Paul addresses in our text this morning concerning what is needed in order for anyone to be saved. That applies to all. For he said the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon the name. No different between the Jew, the Greek, the bond, or free. All who are lost. All who abide in darkness. All who are self-righteous. All whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life. And all this morning who are attempting to acquire it through the efforts of their own righteousness. You know, some people, you can't tell them nothing. You can open up the book and tell them right there. There it is. Oh, that, that, ain't, that ain't what it means. Well, know this morning that when God said you got to come by faith, you can start worrying about how many chickens you can fry to get there. How many pies you can bake to get there. How many songs you can lead to get there. How long you can stand up and pray to get there. How much you can give to get there. None of that's going to get you in. According to the word of God. You got to come by faith. Without faith it cannot and will not be done. It's not about the righteousness of the law. That was ordained to show us our sin. You see people say I live by the ten commandments. No, you die by the Ten Commandments. You don't live by the Ten Commandments. You die by it. The letter of the law kills. And the reason it kills, Elder, because no man can obey the law fully. The Bible said God, hallelujah, sending his own son in the form of sinful flesh, for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but according to the spirit. Hallelujah. In other words, you got to be born again. He said if you violate the law in one area, you're guilty of all. So stop saying, well, I don't do this. I don't do that. I've come to learn that if you ain't doing it, somebody know it. <laughs> Hallelujah. You ain't got to tell nobody. I, I can get a whole panoply, Sister McNeil, of witnesses uh, uh, from 28 years past that'll tell you, oh, that boy don't hang on the corner no more. That boy don't get drunk no more. That boy take his money home to his wife that he, didn't, that he used to didn't do. That boy is this or that boy is that. Hallelujah. Because when you ain't doing it, it'll bear witness for and of itself. The law was just a schoolmaster to point us to the one that could save us. That's what Paul talking about here, and that's Jesus Christ. The one that could save us. All about the righteousness that Christ affords us through his grace. The word is clear, that is, that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. For sin. Because if the law could grant us righteousness, then righteousness should have been by the law. Amen. What does that mean, Pastor? If righteousness comes by the law, hallelujah. It means our works would be the means for our salvation. And the death of Christ would not be needed to save us. And no blood of the Son of God, hallelujah, had to be shed for the blood of bulls and of goats would have been sufficient for the task. But my Bible tells me that the blood of bulls and goats was not good enough because that blood could only cover sin. The Bible said that we needed a blood that could wash away our sin. We needed a blood, glory to God, that can purge our consciences from dead works that we could serve the living God. Let me tell you something. That's why religious folks do what they do when they ain't saved because they can't serve God. Why? Because their consciousness has not been purged from dead works. Hallelujah. Man, when you've been born again, the Bible says you become a new creature. 
in Christ. I don't think the same that I used to, the way I used to think. Sure don't go to places I used to go. Sure don't say the things that I used to say. And sure don't do the things. Glory to God. And that's because of the power of God, Duncan Johnson, lives on the inside of me. Now, my flesh always wants to do them. My flesh still has an appetite for them. But by the power of God on the inside, Raymond, I don't have to lie. I don't have to steal. I don't have to, glory to God, be a thief or any. Thing else. Hallelujah. Tempted every year to cheat on the taxes. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Huh? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Huh? Well, well, well <laughs> you don't have to do it. Because whatever you cheat on, you're going to lose God only knows how many times more. You stand for righteousness. Yeah, you're going to be tempted. Don't do it. Stand for God. The blood of Jesus was necessary because only his precious blood has the power to take away our sin. Salvation is not about works of righteousness which we have done, but according to God's mercy, he has saved us. By the washing of regeneration, Renewing in the Holy Ghost. Mercy that Paul declares grants believers the righteousness that we need in order to see God. It cannot be earned by our works. But only received by the grace of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Faith that comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God the gospel that is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes it stand here today because 28 and a half years ago I believed the gospel God save me faith that comes from our mouths Paul says in confessing that Jesus is the God of salvation Believing that Jesus is the God of salvation and believing that God has raised him from the dead. Amen. Walking that aisle don't save you. Taking the preacher's hand don't save you. Just mere words from your mouth don't save you. But confessing glory to God that Jesus Christ is Lord and believing that he died, glory to God, and was buried for three days and three nights and that he rose again according to the scriptures in your heart. God examines your heart. And everything is lined up. You will receive the Holy Ghost. Jesus shed his blood on the cross for our sins so that he might destroy the power of him that had the power of death and that is the devil. He rose so that we might be delivered. Hallelujah. From the penalty of sin. Rose that we might be delivered from the condemnation of sin. Rose, glory to God, this morning. That we don't have to be eternally separated from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Separation that will be imposed on all those this morning who have rejected the grace of God through Jesus Christ. If you are already saved, you don't have to worry about being separated. If you are already saved, the gospel will not prick your heart. But this morning, if your heart is being pricked by the word of God, what the word is telling you, you need to come to Jesus while you still have time. The only time that is an assurance to you this morning is this present moment that you're living in. You can't take for granted that you're going to have any other time or amount of time allotted to you. Don't let this moment of God's grace Pass you by. The Bible says now is the acceptable time. Today is the day of salvation. 
If you know that you are not a child of God based on everything that I said, you need to call on the name of Jesus. And he will save you today. There is no close when it comes to heaven. As I said, you're either in or you're out. You're either lost or you're saved. You've been condemned or you're justified. You're righteous or you're unrighteous. You got a place in glory or a place in hell. But you can't have both. Give it to Jesus while you still have time. The Bible says that salvation is nigh thee. That means it's close. That is the word of faith which we preach. It's in our mouth. That if we confess with our mouth, the Lord Jesus and believe in our hearts that God has raised him from the dead we'll be saved for with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation he said whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved but know this if you reject Jesus Christ and you die. The closest that salvation was, hear me out, is going to become an eternity away for you. Accept it while it's close. Because once it's over, it's over. No, you won't be able to stand before God and say, God, you know what? I've been a I've been a bad boy and I've been a bad girl, but I ain't been all that bad. The reality is when they stand before the judgment seat, it ain't about whether or not you're guilty. It's a judgment seat to tell you where you're going to spend eternity. For the unbeliever. For the believer, we're just there to get our rewards. To find out whether my preaching was worth anything. To find out whether my giving was worth anything. To find out whether my love was worth anything. To find out whether my joy was worth anything. To find out if my peace was worth anything. If God said, hey, what worth nothing, how gonna get burned up? Stand to your feet. Know that you're saved today. Know that you've been born again. And if you're not, when the offer's made, please don't let pride and self-righteousness block you. Cry out to Jesus. You don't have to come down the aisle. You can do it right where you are. But please, sir, and please, ma'am, do it. And if it means anything, God's coming to live in you. Amen. And when God comes in, you ain't got to worry about quit doing nothing. You just live holy. <laughs> One day you look around, sister, and you say, good God of mighty, good God from Zion. Where all that stuff went? Because between the word and the spirit, you who are that new man, that new woman, will live for the glory of God. Might be somebody today who's lost, who do not know Jesus Christ in the pardon of your sin. You want salvation. You need salvation. Glory to God. You just want to cry out to God because you read in the word that the Bible says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you're here today, glory to God. You can walk this aisle if you want to or you can raise your hand, glory to God, if you want to and cry out to Jesus. Amen. Will there be one? Might be somebody who's listening by way of Facebook who needs Jesus. Today is the day, not tomorrow. When you refuse him today, you made a decision for hell. You got to do it today while it is today. Yeah. Will there be one? Might be somebody who don't have a church home looking for a church home. You can come join us in fellowship at the church. Hallelujah. We might not do everything right, but we endeavor by the grace of God to get it right. He just tells us that we're not perfect. Even though we're perfect in Christ, there's still some shortcomings in our own lives. Will there be one? Will there be one? 
Will there be one? Oh, that's what I want Any my Lord to change? say. Somebody oh, was walking away and ready to come back. I want my Lord to say, oh, well done. Thy good and faithful servant, enter in the joy of the Lord. Yes, oh, sir. that's what I, I want, want my Lord to say. Oh, oh, oh that's what I want my Lord, Lord to say. Oh, well done, thy good and faithful servant, yes, enter in yeah. the joy of the Lord. Oh, that's what I want my Lord to say. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Me, him, and Jesus had a long talk. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He joined here, and I had a long talk with him. I said, son, I need you to just come on back and Spend some time with Jesus and we dedicate yourself back to the Lord and the yeah. church. Yes. And he said, first to you, Pops, I'm going to do that. Hallelujah. He's a man of the word. Yes, yes. Talk about you full of joy. I got a little more joy than you. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. No. Hallelujah. See that I try to live a life, me and my wife, before the kids, that it, they will slowly, hallelujah. slowly come on in. Yes, that's right. That's right. That's right. My son Andre, yeah, that's right. by the he been coming regular. So we must be doing something right. Praise yeah. the Lord. Yeah. Praise yeah. the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Give God praise and all the honor for being so great and so merciful. In Jesus' name. And he wants to see I love him. <laughs> Glad to see him back. My son, too. All right, Ray Ray. All right, praise the Lord that he's back. Yeah. Hallelujah. Give God another hand clap of praise. Yeah. Come on, give him another hand clap of praise. Come on. Alright, 
My name. Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Well, all that's been said. We sent up some timber. We love the Lord. Take the rest of this day, the rest of your life, to glorify God. That all that is in you, it will bring you. A heavenly reward one day. Elder, take us home, please, sir. We lift our hands. Father, we thank you for your kind presence with us today. We thank you for the declaration of your word. We thank you, God, for the soul that came back to you today. We give you praise right now, oh God, for letting us feel your Holy Spirit. We thank you, God, for the blessed assurance that we belong to you and that our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Now, Lord, as we go through this week, give us grace for each day in Jesus' name. Look upon those who are in bereavement. Give them power, oh God, to go through, letting them know that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Those who are sick in their bodies, touch now in Jesus' name. Heal by your mighty power. And we give you praise. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest with it by henceforth now and forevermore. Let the people of God sing together. Ah!